So today I'm going to do another one of those projects to help optimize my garage space. I've been looking for ways to store my extension cords and it seems like everything I find is racks or hooks or something like that but they're all laid out in a horizontal format and I'm really looking for something that I can stack the cords inside each other but I've not been able to find anything so I'm going to make something myself. So this is what I'm looking at trying to do. I've laid out my extension cords on the floor and I'm going to be putting them inside of each other. I took a piece of construction paper and I drew some radius cuts on it. And what I'm gonna do there is make some shelves. They're gonna be four inches wide and I'm gonna make these shelves and I'm gonna weld them to this back plate. On the shelves, I'm gonna weld these little divider tabs. These tabs will allow me to stack extension cords up on the shelves without having them intertwine on each other and get all tangled up. When I'm done with this project, I should be able to put at least a dozen extension cords in this very same footprint. Step one is going to be taking a piece of construction paper and laying out your shelf locations and determining the radius which you need to bend for those shelves. So an easy way to determine that is to take a magic marker and tie a string to it. And for me, uh, I'm making my first cut on the back plate, which is not actually going to be a shelf radius, it's just going to be the top part of the back plate. I'm making that radius at 16 inches. So if you measure from the point of your marker out 16 inches and use that as your radius point, you can draw yourself a consistent radius along your construction paper. So my top piece I'm making at a 16 inch radius. My first shelf, which is gonna hold two or three 230 volt extension cords, that's gonna be a 13 inch radius. My third radius is gonna be a 10 inch radius. My fourth one's gonna be a seven, and my last one is gonna be a four inch radius. So basically I'm coming down at three inches on each one of those radiuses. Once you draw that out on your construction paper, now you can take a, a thin tape measure and you can measure the length of what your shelf needs to be. Also, this is a good time to determine the spacing of your shelves because if you have more extension cords on this one, you're going to need more room between the shelves to get those extension cords to be pulled out. Plus, I'm welding in those separation tabs between those extension cords, so you're going to have to lift up over the top of those as well. So my first set of extension cords will have a distance of six and a half inches. My next one's going to be five inches, and my last one is going to be three inches. And that'll give me plenty enough room to get those extension cords off of that shelf. So the back piece where we're going to weld the shelves to is going to be 24 inches by 28 inches. So I've got the 24 inches already cut and I need to mark the 28. Earlier we mentioned that the shelf width was going to be 4 inches but the lengths are going to be determined by the radiuses. So my top shelf is going to end up being 33 inches long. The next shelf is going to be 26, followed by a 16 inch shelf, and my smallest shelf is going to be 10 inches. So we're going to cut those right now. My next step is to cut the radius in the top of my back mounting plate. I'm going to use the same technique that I used on the construction paper with the magic marker and the piece of string. However, a plasma cutter is almost like a laser. It's very precise. So if you are gonna freehand cut that radius, if you wiggle or move any little bit, it's gonna show up in your cut. So I'm gonna kinda do the same thing I did. I'm gonna attach a piece of string to the end of my plasma torch. Now I'm attaching it using a small hose clamp and I'm attaching it to the insulator cup on the end of the plasma cutter not the contact tip. The contact tip conducts electricity, but the insulator cup does not. 
So this is where I'm going to connect that string to and I'm going to measure that same radius out and I'm going to use that as my guide. Keep in mind that your plasma torch and the string must be perpendicular. If it's not, when you're running it through your radius, the string is either going to wind up or unwind, causing your radius to be off. It's going to be higher or lower. So, you know, you want to make sure that your plasma torch and string stay perpendicular to each other as you're making that cut. And it will give you a perfect radius. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and measure my center point. So, on, on this piece, it's 28 inches long, so that's 14 inches. I'll make my center mark there. I'll make another center mark down here, and I need to measure about 16 inches along that because that's where my, that's what I said our radius was going to be for that top. 16 inches is right there. So this is where I'm going to hold that piece of string as I'm going to make my cut. Before you get started, remember, read and follow all labels and your owner's manual. But I'll need to make the divider tabs for my shelves. For my purposes, my divider tabs are going to be a little bit different sizes because I'm putting the two 40 volt cables up on the top shelf and they're a little bit thicker, so I'm making those divider tabs a little bit longer. Uh, I'm making all the tabs one inches wide, but my top shelf, the tabs are going to be three inches long with a one inch 90 degree bend on the bottom. My intermediate shelf is going to be three and a half inches long again with a one inch bend and the bottom shelf are going to be three inches long uh, with a one inch bend. After you cut your divider pieces make sure you round your corners and deburr any sharp edges. On my divider tabs I'm marking one inch from the end and I'm going to take them over to my bender and I'm going to bend these at a 90 degree. So now we're going to take our shelves that we cut earlier and we're going to run them through the slip rolls to give us that radius that we're looking for. If you don't have a set of slip rolls, you can use anything else in the shop that has that similar radius and form that aluminum around it. You could even use a tire, a wheel, a rim. You could use a metal can or anything like that to give you that initial radius you're looking for. And then you can bring it back to your construction paper that you drew out your templates on and fit it to that and get it to the point where it matches the radius that you drew out. Now that we've got our shelves rolled, we're gonna take our divider tabs and we're gonna weld divider tabs, a set of them on the center of each shelf. And on the top shelf, because it's so long, the edge divider tabs will be about two inches from each end. The next shelf will be an inch and a half from the end. The third shelf will be an inch from the end. The fourth shelf will not get any divider tabs at all. I'm just going to run this through the bead roller and I'm actually going to put a little flared lip on the edge. This one's getting real small extension cords and it's just to keep them from falling off. I'm going to start welding the shelves right in the middle first. Then I can set the sides to the distance I need and make sure that they're equal. Extension cord project done. Now I've got all my extension cords in one location. 